<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Benmore CrossFit at home. Um, we've got a great workout today. Today's workout is a combination of strength and explosive um, plyometric power. So let's have a look at it. We've got five rounds for time of 10 deadlift. RX width for the guys is 100 kgs. RX width for the girls is 70 kgs. Followed by 15 box jumps. Uh, you do each of that five times and do it as fast as possible. If you don't have um, a barbell, then some of the odd object options are um, odd object sumo deadlifts, and I'll talk you through that. And then whatever you can find in terms of a platform, um, you can just jump onto that. Ideally, uh, for the guys, it's 24 inches and 20 inches for the girls. So if you're trying to do something at home, it just gives you a target to work towards. But if it's a little bit less than that, if it's a little bit more than that, even better. Okay, uh, purpose of this workout, as I say, is to lift <coughs> kind of medium weight um, and do it under fatigue. So in terms of the weight you should be shooting for, uh, it should be something that you can smoothly lift uh, in your warm-up for at least seven or eight reps. Um, if you find the workout you need to break it into two sets of five, that's fine. Uh, if you can if you can bosh out 10 um, then it's probably too light unless of course you've got a monster deadlift of like 300 kgs and 100 kgs is just like a warm-up weight in which case just go for it um, <clears throat> but if you're uh, an average person like me then um, probably looking to be able to squeeze out at you know, eight unbroken easily so then the workout two sets of five to make it up okay in terms of the warm-up, a uh, bit of intensity in the, in, the, uh, in the starting part. So two minutes of easy running, rowing, biking, followed by two minutes of 20 seconds sprinting, 10 seconds easy. Okay, so if I was running, I'd run, yep, run for my two minutes. Then I'd sprint as hard as I could for 20 seconds. Then I'd just jog for 10 seconds, sprint as hard as I could for 20 seconds, jog, just to make up the, the second two minutes. By the time you finish this, you want to come back feeling particularly out of breath, um, you should be sweating by the end of this. Okay, in terms of our stretching and our prep, we're gonna do 10 good mornings followed by 10 air squats. So, good mornings. Uh, really simple way of knowing you're getting them right. So, start off with your feet, feet together, heels apart, toes apart. It's the same foot, foot position that we use for our deadlift, just in case you didn't see that. Heels apart, toes apart. <coughs> Push your tummies out, make them really fat. Finger on the belly button, finger in your sternum, and push your bum back, keeping your legs straight. Maybe a slight bend in your, in your knees, but, but nothing significant, okay? So keep your legs relatively straight. Push your bum back as far as you can, keep your chest up, and keep going, 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 until you feel that distance get a little bit smaller, and then push your chest, stop. So for me, that looks like this. And you should feel a really good stretch in the back of your hamstrings. If your tummy's really tight, you want to use that to explode up. So when you stand up, everything's still pushing out good and fat. So 10 good mornings, followed by 10 air squats. Air squats look like this. Feet just outside, hip width, hip, uh, hip width apart, between hip width and shoulder width apart, depending on your own personal preference. <clears throat> Toes moving forward, fat tummy again, bum goes back, and you sit down. Stand, and stand, okay, air squats. So, 10 good mornings, followed by 10 air squats, three times. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go through a little bit of stretching routine. So, dead bugs, bird dogs, and fire hydrants. These are great uh, core warm-up exercises. So, dead bugs look like this. Line our backs. First thing to do is to make sure that there's no space between our, uh, the small of our back and the ground. So we tilt our pelvis up. And we make sure that space is completely gone. We make sure our pelvis is tilted up the whole time. Lift our legs up. Don't allow them to go past um, vertical. 
Get a vertical and horizontal <laughs> mixed up. <laughs> I was going to say parallel, and that's not right either. <laughs> no, 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 don't allow them to go past um, vertical. Okay, so not like this. This is fine, but don't allow them to come past here. Hands up. Opposite arms and legs. Okay, and uh, heels don't quite touch the ground, and front of the back doesn't quite touch the ground. Okay, but you want to get so that they're, they're super duper close. So thirty of those, alternating. So so ultimately you do fifteen on one side, fifteen on the other, but do them alternating. Then bird dogs, look like this. On all fours, one hand goes out and the other leg goes back, alter opposite sides, and bring your elbow to kiss your knee, out, squeeze your bum at the top, and try and, try and remain as steady and stable as you can. It's 30 in total, so it's 15 on one side, you can either alternate them or you can do 15 all in one go, or you can do it like this, whatever floats your boat. Fire hydrants, uh, 15 on each side, <coughs> the fire hydrant, I'll come in, it's quite off. Same starting position, we're on our hands and knees, this time we lift our knee out to the side, so we lead with our knee, as far out as we can, with as far as we can without our hips really turning right. So for me it's there. Push your heels back, bring your leg round, and in. Knee, heel, back. Knee, heel, back. So fifteen percent. Times two, the whole thing. So Dead both bird dog fire, fire hydrants, times two. Next we're going to go for rudder's lunge. Now this one, um, I want you to spend as long as you feel it takes for your hips really to open up. It's probably going to be at least a minute per side. It might be two minutes per side. Next thing is, um, I'll do it front up first of all. One leg goes forward, other leg goes back. I'm squeezing my bum on my back leg. I'm making sure it's as straight as I can. To start off with, I've got both hands in front of me. My this hand is inside my leg. So it's not out here, it's in here. And I'm trying to sink down in my hips in here as low as I can. Might want to take my elbow and see. Can I get it done? How far? How close to the ground you can get it? Now, if you've got really good mobility, and you'll be able to get your elbow onto the ground. That's not a target, by the way. Guys, this is just, you know, be where you're at. It's totally fine. And just really sink into it. Don't allow your back leg to bend. You can go, oh look, I'm really flexible. Make sure your back leg is tight and taut the whole time. Other side, so you can see that side on. <coughs> so my back leg is as straight as I can get it. On this tight, I just start to sink in to my hip. In this case, on my right hand side. Okay, brother's lunge. Approximately one to two minutes per side. Um, you might find that you need to spend more time on one side than the other. I need to always spend more time on my left hand side. Uh, if you've been following along our little uh, mobility series, uh, hopefully you have got yourself a little ball. Uh, and you just maybe show your 
glutes a little bit of bulb up. Um, <clears throat> for this, you can just use a tennis ball. If you have it, great. If you don't have a ball, it's fine. You can skip this piece. Um, take the ball, sit in your glutes. One, the, the glute that you're working on, straighten out that leg and use your other leg, bend it, just to give you a little bit of leverage to go left and right and forwards and backwards. And just find a spot that maybe feels a little bit more sensitive. I've got one right there. When you find it, big breath in, squeeze your glutes. And repeat that on both sides. And again, spend sort of between a minute to two minutes on each side. Alrighty. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who are doing an odd object deadlift, let me just get a odd object. <clears throat> Start off standing directly over the weight, so the weight is in between your legs, and your foot position is different than whenever you're doing a deadlift uh, with the bar. So, <clears throat> if you're doing, if you're working with a deadlift, feel free to fast forward this bit. If you're just working with an odd object, just focus on this piece. Okay, so odd object can be kettlebell, dumbbell, stuffed rucksack, um, whatever it is that you've got. Put it between, put it on the ground and step over it. Bend over to touch your hands on it. Don't pick it up yet. Sit down, pretending that you are an angry gorilla. So your chest is up and your bum is down. And from here, keeping a big proud chest, stand up. Stand up. Could be more straightforward. Okay. If you are, in terms of your weight, if you only have one weight, <clears throat> um, I would recommend that you, rather than just do 10 deadlift, I would recommend that you see how many deadlift you can do in 45 seconds. And if that's 20 or 25, well then that's the number that you will use in the workout, so you won't do 10, okay, because we're trying to get the same stimulus. If you don't have a heavy weight, that is okay, so, but if you find that your big heavy um, odd object means you can only squeeze out five at a time, well then that's fine, perfect, no problem. But I'm just conscious that some of you will have like a, a 10 kg kettlebell that, that you could just do lots and lots of reps. So how many reps should you do? You should do as many reps as you can in 45 seconds, record that number and replace that with the 10 in the deadlift. Does that make sense there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So <clears throat> for the rest, for those of you who do have a barbell, I've got a light barbell set up here. The reason I've got some weight on it is just because it's at the right height. Um, okay. Let's first of all think about our deadlift setup. Okay. First of all, when I stand here and I look down, I can't see the knot on my laces. Okay? So if I stand back here, I can see the knot on my laces. If I stand, well, the bar won't allow me to do that. <laughs> but I stand so that the, the bar hides the knot. Okay? That just gives me a really good idea of where to place my feet. In terms of how far apart should they be, see how you did in the good morning, put your feet together, put your heels apart, put your feet apart. Okay? So it's quite a narrow stance. I mean, it's not like this, but it's not like this. That's a different movement, that's a sumo deadlift. Anyway, okay. Where should the bar then be whenever I go to lift? Oh, I can see my shoe laces. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so in the same way in our sumo deadlift, we bend over, but we don't, uh, we don't pick up the bar yet at all. We then go into our angry gorilla back position. And the bar is absolutely wedged against my shins. 
Okay? And it's the reason why I wear these things when I'm deadlifting. They're nowhere near my knees, but they're just keeps the bar from scraping my shins. Okay, so the bar is absolutely against my shins. Sarah, can you come around to the side here for a minute? Mm -hmm. Where are my shoulders relative to the bar? Are they in front of the bar or behind the bar? Oh, they're in front. Yeah, it's just in front. Okay, not massive in front, they'll fall over, but not back here. Okay, so just in front. And in terms of my shoulders, my shoulders go back when I, when I go to lift. So my shoulders are in front of the bar, but I screw them around. I take all the tension in my back. From here, I push up. Oh, my hips. My hips shouldn't be way up here. No. And it shouldn't be way down here. Just like. Mm -hmm. From here, I'm ready to lift. I push the ground away. And I stand. I come back down again, it's just the exact opposite movement, so I bend it. I start with my hips going back. I stand, my hips and shoulders move at the same rate. Okay. So hopefully just some little tips for you guys to think about. <clears throat> Foot placement, bar placement, shoulder placement, and moving my hips and shoulders at the same time. Okay. <clears throat> Go through that setup drill at least uh, five times. So literally, here's the bar, get yourself set up. Walk away, come back in again. Just so you get that muscle memory of knowing how to set up for the, for the uh, deadlift. <clears throat> All right. In your in your warm up, aim to complete uh, four sets, getting up to your working weight. So start with an empty bar, always start with an empty bar. Then move to uh, a light weight, moderate weight, and then the weight that you're going to use for the workout. Okay? And you should be able to easily do seven reps um, unbroken, no problem. And then maybe in the workout, I would recommend that you do two sets of five. Here. As I said at the top, if you're able to do 10 on Brogan for the whole thing, it's maybe just a little bit too light. Um, unless, of course, you're just absolute beast and yeah, you've got a 501 kilo deadlift, in which case you can just do this all day. Although, good luck in box jumping. <laughs> okay, <coughs> box jumps. So, um, whatever it is that you're going to use for your platform, and um, start off with some step ups. So. Five step ups per side. Take it nice and easy. And make sure you squeeze your bum. Open your hips to the top. Then five box jumps. I always like to use my thumbs when I box jump. So if I start off, I swing. Oh. <laughs> So start off with five at the height you're going to use for the workout. Then move it up a level. And then back down to whatever it is you're going to use for the workout. So I appreciate that if you're using a platform, you might not be able to increase the height materially, but if you can, just try and find a few, um, a few things to add onto the top of your platform. If you do have a barbell, <coughs> you'll have plates. Um, add a few different plates on top of your platform, just to make it a little bit higher, and then bring it back down again to the height you're going to use in the workout. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason for that is it just it helps train your muscle memory that 
it's a bit easy to fit the height of the box jump. And as I'm going to speak for Sarah here, and as, uh, as somebody, Sarah, who has had uh, a fear of box jumps, which is very normal, um, I'd say, Sarah, you've noticed, I've noticed the difference in you whenever you've gone through that little routine, mm -hmm. where you set the box up a little bit higher than you're going to use in the workout, then in the workout, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's a really good workout. It should it should take you somewhere in the region of ten minutes ish. Um, if you've done it in five minutes, well then you're a superstar uh, and go back to yourself a ticket at the CrossFit Games. Um, and uh, if you've done it in twenty minutes, well you've gone too heavy and you haven't pushed hard enough. So just really think about that time period. Um, just. It's just to help you think about how long will this, t you know, the weights particularly, um, uh, have I scaled appropriately? Um, now, don't be dis despondent if it takes you 15 minutes, that, that's okay, but it's just to give you a, a, a time scale. Um, now, if you, if you do it in eight minutes and you're lying on the floor in a pool of sweat, well then you've gone hard and that's good too, but it's just to give you a rough guide. Okay, hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, drop me a line. Alrighty. Hope you have fun guys and um, we'll see you again tomorrow. Alright, bye.